I love movies. That is obvious based on my channel and knowledge. Today is also my birthday, at least that's when I plan on releasing this video. We as people only get older and cover the highlighted topics throughout the years. I also change my opinions a lot on my favorite film of the year, especially my favorite movies. So what I claim was the best movie of the year three years ago probably isn't that anymore. This is pretty much a trip down memory lane for me. I will give shout outs to the notable films of those respective years and on we go. I was born in 2008, and I am happy because in terms of cinema, this is one of the highlighted years of the 20th first century. Shout out to Wally, Never Back Down, Iron Man, Synecdoche, New York, Slumdog Millionaire, Step Brothers, Kung Fu Panda, Gran Torino, and You Don't Mess with the Zohan. I mention all these movies because this year has genuine competition, especially Synecdoche, New York, which is just such a personal movie with heavy existential themes from the madman that is Charlie Kaufman. And while I hate to be generic, but it's The Dark Knight. So much of what I love about movies today is credited to this movie. The practical and technical achievements, Hans Zimmer's iconic score, the brilliant and praised to death performances of Ledger, Bale, Eckhart, Gil and Allen Oldman. The Dark Knight is a massive feat on all fronts. This fucker is a non-stop event for two and a half hours with three to five climaxes that leave you guessing. I know this is a generic pick and there will be a couple more, but it would be out of character for me to not pick it. Ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe. In 2009, Tarantino released the anti-war satire Inglorious Bastards. Honorable mentions to Up, Avatar, and Fantastic Mr. Fox, but I just love this movie. With standout performances by Brad Pitt and Christoph Waltz, it's funny and well-written in how it tells its story and rewrites history without affecting history. And you just gotta respect the writing style of Tarantino who's able to pull this off in a very satisfying and entertaining way. Is this what you want? Hmm? 2010 was a crazy good year for movies. Quick rundown of honorable mentions with Inception, Toy Story 3, The Fighter, and 127 Hours. But if you've seen my favorite movies video, it's The Social Network. I won't be the first and certainly won't be the last, but this film is ahead of its time. I've seen and studied this movie an unhealthy amount of times. This film, among other things, captures how narcissism took over the world. It came out at the right time when Facebook was still everywhere and forced Mark Zuckerberg to change his perspectives and personality by how unpleasant this betrayal was. There's not a single bad performance, it's carried by Jesse Eisenberg's best performance, great performances by Andrew Garfield, Justin Timberlake, and Army Hammer. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross's score is euphoric. The cinematography by Jeff Cronin with is very underrated and amazing and is an achievement in pacing with that two hour runtime. All in all, this is what Daddy Fincher is all about. Rendon out swinging. Angels tie 2011 is probably my biggest blindside for movies, so this is why the only honorable mentions are Crazy Stupid Love, Drive, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and Real Steel. I need to check out other movies from 2011, and that's also why my top pick is Moneyball. An Aaron Sorkin theme is going on right now, but this film is just sweet. I'm not the biggest sports enthusiast, but Moneyball is incredibly moving and inspiring to say the least. On with the next year. All you've ever done is work to ruin my life! Well, now I'm finally gonna fight back! Fuck him up, Eric! Fuck you, can't. Finally picking up the speed with 2012 and a handful of honorable mentions with Argo, The Avengers, Skyfall, Looper, The Dark Knight Rises, The Amazing Spider-Man, and 21 Jump Street because my favorite is Django Unchained. This film is one of the best hero stories of the last 15 years. It's incredibly fun and engaging by most Tarantino stereotypes from the raw amounts of blood, entertaining dialogue, and characters. A lot of people praise Christoph Waltz and Inglorious Bastards, but I would argue he is much more magnetic here. Jamie Foxx is iconic as Django, Sam Jackson is despicable, and Leo is an incredible villain. Just a fantastic watch from beginning to end. Nah, it's okay, we'll get him next time. There's not going to be a next time, you fucking dumb cocksucker! Hey, take it easy, Colonel. I told you a long time ago, you fucking little monkey, not to fuck me! Hey! Hey, who the fuck do you think you're talking to, huh? Huh? Ah! 2013 is one of the most slept on years because there was a lot of great movies this year. Shout out to Dallas Buyers Club, American Hustle, Under the Skin, Lock, Her, and Prisoners because my favorite is The Wolf of Wall Street. I go back and forth on my favorite Scorsese film with this, Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, and The Departed. You are led with an incredible script, an unforgettable Leo DiCaprio performance, great performances by Jonah Hill, Margot Robbie, and Rob Reiner. The more it goes on, the more the three hour runtime is barely an issue. This film gives 
gives me an adrenaline rush that I have never felt before and the fact that Scorsese made this in his 70s is quite commendable. Oh boy, 2014 was the year. Get ready because shoutouts to Birdman, Grand Budapest Hotel, Whiplash, Guardians of the Galaxy, Days of Future Past, Lego Movie, Winter Soldier, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, John Wick, and Gone Girl. You probably heard all those titles and wonder what is my favorite. Well, the answer is Nightcrawler. I like movies with an irredeemable protagonist and Jake Gyllenhaal as Lou Bloom is everything like that and more. This film manages to do a great job at showcasing someone trying to take over the video news landscape for his own personal gain and how persistent these people get and the bad things they are willing to do in the long run. Full of an incredible cast of characters, amazing editing, and an underrated score and theme that more people need to talk about, just a very thrilling watch, and just like all these movies, check them out if you have not seen them. Now before I talk about the obvious victor here in Mad Max Fury Road, shout out to Room, The Revenant, The Martian, The Hateful Eight, and Anomalisa, because I mean it's fucking Fury Road, baby. For all the reasons that have been explained briefly, for that matter, it's a true experience that has you rewinding scene after scene. Even judging this film by its technical achievements in sound, makeup, editing, effects, and cinematography, it's a beauty to look at, and would highly recommend watching while fully hydrated, because like Tom Hardy, I was deprived of water and I think I want to relive that experience again. There's a girl about to board a plane to Paris right now that I love and we already heard that one. Asshole. 2016 was an interesting year, and an even better year for movies. I do think we peaked with 2014, but we'll get one more in just a bit. Shout out to Arrival, Hell or High Water, Split, Deadpool, 20th Century Women, Silence, and Moonlight, because it's La La Land. I'm not even a musical guy, but the songs here are great and catchy. Along with the Broadway aesthetics, the lighting that tells the story, Emma Stone, and my guy Ryan Gosling. It's just such a traditional and untraditional musical at the same time, and that's what makes it good. It's sweet and I like sweet movies. We've been selecting some dark and messed up movies so cheers to La La Land. As we return to Darkland, honorable mentions to Baby Driver, War for the Planet of the Apes, John Wick 2, Guardians 2, Logan, Okja, A Ghost Story, Lady Bird, and especially Good Time. Which was my number one until I remembered Blade Runner 2049. As sequels go, they could be better, but this one does everything as equal and sometimes better than the original. It's beautifully shot, the world building is excellent, Ryan Gosling is terrific, and the direction by Denis Villeneuve is masterful since he's one of the greatest tours working today and I admire everything about this movie more every time I think about it Twenty eighteen was a pretty good year unlike the next year. I do think that there are gems to be found. Shout out to Hereditary, First Reformed, Under the Silver Lake, A Star is Born, and Sorry to Bother You. Which if we didn't include animation, it would be my pick, but Spider-Verse just was and still is a film that left a lasting impact on me. I remember seeing the first teaser and thinking Sony is going to hit a new low, but when you have the guys who did the Lego movie, I guess everything works out pretty well in the end. I mean aside from what it does new with the lore, this film has changed the animation landscape landscape for the better. I mean, single frames alone are masterful and I would love on my bedroom wall. This film will continue to get better as the years go by and I have no doubt that the third movie will be any less good. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I love you, car. 2019 was a time to be alive and a significant year at that. It was the year before COVID, Epstein died, Disney's last successful year, and cinema peaked once again. Shout out to Ford v Ferrari, The Lighthouse, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Waves, Parasite, and The Irishman. But my top pick is the Safdie Brothers gem, Uncut Gems. Out of all the directors brought from A24, the Safdie Brothers without question would be my favorite in this trend. A film dealing and examining the greed within ourselves, the cinematography is shot in a way to make the most heart racing scenes feel claustrophobic. Adam Sandler gives easily his best performance as Howard Ratner. A movie that can bring out the most interesting and permanent reactions out of you deserves all the credit and the Safdies are making the best crime films out right now. Scientists are still trying to trace the origin of the pandemic. Did it come from a lab or an animal market? 2020 was a depressing year, giving nothing new and rarely had new films and made delayed films a permanent staple since then. The 
two notable honorable mentions for me are Soul and The Sound of Metal because the best film of that year is Another Round. I just love this movie. Like Uncut Gems and Nightcrawler, films like these give the most interesting reactions. A story of four high school teachers taking on the experiment of constantly drinking to see how it affects their lives goes from a fun and entertaining watch until halfway when it gets imprinted into your mind that this is seriously depressing. Mads Mikkelsen is incredible, the ending is sad, cheerful, and exciting, just such an emotional experience to say the least. The first case of an infectious new Delta variant has been confirmed in Sydney in hotel quarantine. 2021 was a very special year because one, it brought movie theaters back, and two, it was the year I started this channel. And I had labeled multiple movies as the top spot, and looking back on this list, yeah, this would not be the same today. And my letterbox version of this list looks entirely different, which is interesting. Shout out to No Time to Die, The Green Knight, No Way Home, The Suicide Squad, and the top runner up, come on, come on, because my number one is Dune. Denis Villeneuve continues to to prove how brilliant and how much of a technical trailblazer he is with this, Blade Runner, and Arrival. You see the money in front of the screen and visuals that don't seem like visuals at all? This thing is a beauty to look at and a thrilling first chapter, and if the third film sticks the landing, we have another trilogy to talk about for ages. In the same way as The Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and Toy Story, and I hope films like Dune lead Hollywood down the right path of excess. What the hell? Having any fun yet? Rooster, are you having any fun yet? Are you having fun? 2022 was an interesting year. Looking back on it, I think I took this year for granted because 2023 happened and took me for a damn spin. Shout out to Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Batman, The Northman, Avatar The Way of Water, Elvis, After Sun, and The Fablemans because my favorite is Top Gun Maverick. This really was that blockbuster masterpiece because it reaches to multiple audiences who are just looking for that nice slice of pure fun. Tom Cruise just might be one of the last true movie stars and the more he pumps out films like this, the more I agree with that statement. Its impressive visuals alone set it apart from other modern blockbusters from the real flying sequences. There are great emotion-heavy performances from nearly everyone, I Ain't Worried is a banger, and the ending does have me cheering. Now I'm become death, the destroyer of worlds. <laughs> Then bringing us back to last year with 2023, and surprisingly, I have had the same views on all my top films, the honorable mentions being John Wick 4, The Killer, The Holdovers, and Across the Spiders, because as of right now, my top pick is still Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is one of my favorite films of his, the way it tells its story within black and white and color is great, the technical aspects like most of his films, even the ones I don't like that much, are always on point in making you think you are watching a spectacle of that year. It also feels great to call Nolan an Academy Award winner because truth be told, it was long overdue since The Dark Knight that this man should have had an award by now. It's insanely character driven and keeps you engaged within the three hours and thank god this was the film that brought him back. And now back to the present with 2024, my favorite from this year, well it has yet to be decided. Some titles floating for that spot are The Bike Riders, Dune Part 2, Challengers, A Different Man, and The Fall Guy, but I'm saving that for the end of the year best and worst video. In terms of future videos and updates, I will have two big 2024 videos out soon. Some possible reviews for big blockbusters and streams on my Twitch channel, I will try to see if that can become a regular. But all in all, stay tuned for the future and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye.